So it's a little bit like the silver watch from 1863, except there's much more money involved. The lawsuit is thrown out and the whole thing cost Pepsi in today's money about a quarter of a million dollars in lawyers' fees. So how does this follow from the two principles we've discussed so far? Is the Pepsi case similar to the invitation to dinner? Maybe not, because in the invitation to dinner, everybody took that seriously, much more seriously than in either of these two. It was just an informal situation. Here, it seems more formal. There are order forms and checks and things like that. But we have to see if both sides took it seriously. So is it somewhat similar to the Silver Watch case? Remember, in the Silver Watch case, both the buyer and seller knew that the whole thing was a joke. It was not to be taken seriously. In this case, certainly Pepsi was not serious, but what about the buyer? He seemed to be taking it seriously. He got his friends together. They bought a cashier's check for $700,000. So that looks like serious business. However, what is complicated here is that the hopeful buyer of the Harrier jet, Leonard, pretty well knew it was not meant to be taken seriously, but he decided to take it seriously anyway. He decided to take it seriously because he thought it was a nifty way to get some real money from Pepsi. But when you get to the root of it, what you see that this was something that neither side should have taken seriously. So what do we have here? We have some promises which are real promises, but people don't expect that these promises can be taken to court. It's just got the wrong feel to it. They are informal relations. It's the kind of promise that friends make to each other for friendly relations, that lovers make to each other, and they don't expect to be able to take them to court, and the law will not stand behind them. Similarly, in the Silver Watch case, the law won't stand behind them, not because this was not the kind of promise that people don't take to court. Buying and selling things come to court all the time, but only if they intend them to be real promises. These are things that look like promises, but that one or both of them don't think are promises. They are not real promises. They just look that way. And the Harrier jet is another more complicated case because that's a case where Pepsi didn't intend even to make a real promise. They intended to be a sort of joke. Leonard probably knew that, certainly knew that. But what he thought is, look, the law says that contracts are promises. This is a promise. It looks like a promise. It quacks like a promise. Let's make a promise out of it. And it's not just a social interchange. $700,000 is real money. So let's see what we can get. And the court said, we're not going to get involved in this kind of thing either. So we've got three examples two of which look like promises or exchange, but really aren't, and one of them, the dinner, is a real promise, a real exchange with real harm when it was broken. The invitation to dinner was not no harm, no foul, but it was because it was not the kind of thing that the law says is intended to create legal relations. And as you and I might say, it's not the kind of promise which anybody expects to take to court. You can tell your friends what a stinker I am. You can ruin my reputation, but judges, jurors, lawyers don't want to have anything to do with stuff like that. It's just playing in the wrong arena. 
So not every promise is a contract.